Hi everybody. Welcome back to Pharma Explorer. Have you ever wondered how drugs enter into our bodies? Well, you are about to find out. In this video, we are going to explore the different routes of administration that drugs can be delivered. This is our plan for today. Let's dive in. Route of drug administration is the pathway through which a medication is introduced into our bodies. Route of drug administration can be categorized mainly as illustrated in this diagram. The enteral route delivers the drug into the body through the gastrointestinal tract. The term enteral is derived from the Greek word enteron which means intestine or gut. This route of administration includes oral, sublingual, buccal and rectal pathways. Oral administration Giving a drug by mouth is the most common, convenient and economical route of administration. But it also has several disadvantages such as limited absorption, gastric irritation, destruction of some drugs by digestive enzymes or low gastric pH. Sublingual administration. In sublingual administration, the placement of a drug under the tongue allows the drug to absorb from the oral mucosa and diffuse into the capillary network of the venous drainage. Venous drainage from the mouth directly enters to the superior vena cava, thus bypassing the portal circulation. As a consequence, a drug held sublingually and absorbed from that site is protected from the low pH in the stomach as well as rapid intestinal and hepatic first pass metabolism. Buccal Administration Buccal administration is similar to sublingual administration but involves placing medication between the cheek and gum. In this route of administration, the drug is absorbed through the oral mucosa. Hormone replacement therapy is an example for this route of administration. Rectal administration. The rectal route is useful if the drug induces the vomiting when given orally or if the patient is already vomiting. Approximately 50% of the drainage of the rectal region bypasses the portal circulation. Therefore, the biotransformation of the drugs by the liver is minimized. The drug given through the rectum is also protected from the low pH in the stomach. However, rectal absorption can be regular, incomplete and certain drugs can be cause irritation of the rectal mucosa as well. Now let's have a look into the parenteral route of drug administration. Parenteral drug administration refers to the drug administration by injection which takes the drug directly into the tissue, fluid or blood without having to cross the enteral mucosa. Parenteral administration mainly includes intravascular, intramuscular or subcutaneous pathways. Intravenous or IV administration Intravenous injection is the most common route in parenteral administration. The drug is injected as a bolus or infused slowly over hours in one of the superficial veins. The drug reaches directly into the bloodstream and is distributed rapidly, hence the bioavailability is complete. Since drug effects are produced immediately, this method is valuable in emergency situations. Also useful to treat unconscious, uncooperative or vomiting patients. IV route is important for drugs that are not absorbed orally. With IV administration, the drug avoids the GI tract and therefore is not exposed to low pH in the stomach as well as the rapid intestinal and hepatic first pass metabolism. However, unlike drugs present in the GI tract, those that are given IV cannot be recalled by strategies such as emesis or binding to activated charcoal. 
It is also important to keep in mind that IV is the riskiest route of administration as vital organs like heart, brain get directly exposed to high concentration of the given drug. Intramuscular or IM administration The drug is injected in one of the large skeletal muscles such as deltoid, triceps, gluteus maximus or rectus femoris. Muscle is less richly supplied with sensory nerves, therefore mild irritants can be injected and also is more vascular, therefore absorption of drugs in aqueous solutions is faster. Drugs administered intramuscularly can be aqueous solutions or specialized depot preparations. Absorption of drugs in aqueous solution is fast whereas that from depot preparations is slow. Slow, constant absorption from the intramuscular site results if the drug is injected in solution in oil or suspended in various other repository vehicles. As the vehicle diffuses out of the muscle, the drug precipitates at the site of injection, dissolves slowly, providing sustained dose over an extended period of time. Subcutaneous Administration The drug is deposited in the loose subcutaneous tissue, is richly supplied by nerves, therefore the irritant drugs cannot be injected using this route of administration, but is less vascular and absorption is lower than intramuscular route. Injection into a subcutaneous site can be done only with drugs that are not irritating to the tissues, otherwise severe pain, necrosis and tissue slowing may occur. The rate of absorption following the subcutaneous injection of a drug is generally constant and slow, providing a sustained effect. Self-injection is possible because deep penetration is not needed. Subcutaneous injection minimizes the risks associated with intravascular injection. Intraarterial Administration Occasionally, a drug is injected directly into an artery to localize its effect in particular tissue or organ, such as in treatment of liver tumors and head and neck cancers. Diagnostic agents sometimes are administered by this route. Inadvertent intraarterial administration can cause serious complications and requires careful management. Intrathecal intraventricular administration. The blood brain barrier and the blood cerebrospinal fluid barrier often preclude or slow the entrance of drugs into the central nervous system. Therefore, when local and rapid effects of drugs on the meninges or cerebrospinal axis are desired, as in spinal anesthesia, drugs sometimes are injected directly into the spinal subarachnoid space. Brain tumors and serious central nervous system infections treated by direct intrathecal administration of some drugs. Intradermal route of administration Intradermal injections are delivered into the dermis just beneath the outermost skin layer epidermis. They primarily exert localized effects with minimal systemic impact. These injections are frequently employed for tuberculin skin tests as well as allergy assessments and administering local anesthetics. Intraosseous route of administration Intraosseous infusion involves injecting fluids directly into the marrow of a bone offering a reliable access point to the body's venous system which doesn't easily collapse. The intraosseous route serves several purposes including fluid resuscitation, drug administration and laboratory testing. Intraperitoneal route of administration an intraperitoneal injection involves delivering a substance into the peritoneum, the body's cavity. 
In rodent research, the intraperitoneal route is frequently employed to administer pharmacological agents into the peritoneal cavity. This method is easy to learn, swift and causes minimal stress to the animals involved in the study. Apart from main two routes of administration, there are few other routes of administration as well. Inhalation, intranasal, transdermal and topical are few examples of that. Let's talk about inhalation route of administration initially. Inhalation provides the rapid delivery of drug across the large surface area of the mucous membranes of the respiratory tract and pulmonary epithelium. This route of administration is used for drugs that are gases or those that can be dispersed in an aerosol form. This route is particularly effective and convenient for patients with respiratory complaints. Intranasal route of administration The mucous membrane of the nose can readily absorb many things. Desmospressin, which administered intranasally in the treatment of diabetes insipidus and a peptide hormone which is used in the treatment of osteoporosis are some examples. Transdermal route of administration This route of administration achieves systemic effects by application of drugs to the skin, usually via a transdermal patch. The rate of absorption can vary markedly depending upon the physical characteristics of the skin at the site of application. This route is often used for the sustained delivery of drugs such as the anti-anginal drugs. Topical route of administration Drugs are applied to the mucous membranes of the conjunctiva nasopharynx, oropharynx, vagina, colon, urethra and urinary bladder primarily for their local effects. Topically applied ophthalmic drugs and medicines used for skin conditions are some examples. Each route of administration has its advantages and disadvantages. The correct choice of route of administration is depend on Factors such as physical and chemical properties of the drug, site of desired action, rate and extent of absorption of the drug from different routes, effect of digestive juices and first pass metabolism on the drug, rapidity with which the response is desired, accuracy of the dosage required and conditions of the patient like unconscious, vomiting, etc. And there you have it, a detailed tour through the diverse routes of drug administration. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more engaging content. Thanks for joining Pharma Explorer today. Let's meet again with another interesting video about pharmacy.